Create for me a clean heart, oh God. Let me be like you in all my ways. Give me your truth. Teach me your song. Shelter me in the shadow of your wings. For we are your righteousness. If we die to ourselves. And that is where my memory cuts off. I was just getting to the good part. I can't remember the rest. But that first part is stuck in my brain. And I will never forget it. I won't forget the lyrics. I won't forget the moves. Because that was worship dance. And worship dance was a huge part of my life when I was a homeschooled fundy teenager. Now, if you're wondering if this would be an appropriate worship dance outfit, no, absolutely not. <laughs> this is super immodest. So instead, you're going to need to wear something that covers you from the neck to the toes. We liked to opt for a very culty looking tunic. I will try to put a picture on the screen if I can find one. And what was cool about this tunic is we had two options. We could either wear a blue sort of like over tunic to it. I preferred that one because I just thought it looked better. Um, looked a little more elegant, you know? It wasn't quite as culty, looked a little bit more like what I imagined like modern dance to maybe look like, a little bit. You know, you had to use your imagination on that one. But the other option, and I think it was the one that my worship dance teacher preferred, was just the white tunic with this like sheer jacket thing that tied in the front. Now the cool thing about that one is that we got to wear a white flower crown to go with it. Now that I'm thinking about it, it looked a little bit like Midsummer. I haven't seen that movie, but I know it's about a really creepy cult and that there's like death and a lot of trauma. So that's kind of what it looks like to me now in retrospect. But the way we got these outfits was by looking in this catalog, we had to flip through as a class with the teacher and sometimes the parents would get involved to make sure that the costumes we chose were modest enough. And I remember there were a lot of debates about it. There was a lot of disagreements. There were some, you know, alterations discussed. We had to like wear slips underneath, you know, if the skirt was sheer. So you couldn't see like our legs. Can't let anybody's dad or uncle or son stumble in the audience. But yeah, we would have um, an end of the year performance. Um, it was around this time of year in May, kind of like a graduation. Um, and it was really long and it would just be class after class after class after class. And let me tell you, this Christian dance studio was big. There were like a lot of classes in it, actually. And um, there were all different ages and there were a bunch of different kinds of dance. We even had a Christian hip hop class. And looking back on that is embarrassing because it was not hip hop. Have you seen that white lady from the 80s maybe? Or no, 90s probably. And she's like, hit it, hit it. That's what makes it hip hop. <laughs> hey, I'm Dina. Look at my feet. My feet are straight ahead. You don't want to do that. You want to turn your feet out. And I'm going to do this backwards. And that's what makes it look like hip hop. Three, four, hit, ah, and ah. The, the more relaxed you are, that's what makes it hip hop. Start out just hitting it. Hit it, hit it, ah. Like, just kind of imagine that, but Christian, with kids. Um, that's kind of what the hip hop class looks like. <laughs> uh, I wasn't allowed to do hip hop. I also wasn't allowed to do jazz. Too sexy. Except 
not sexy when I look back on it. Also, children shouldn't be sexualized in general, so there's that. But anyways, a lot of different kinds of dance. I, and my sibling Annie, took worship dance, lyrical, and ballet. Lyrical was my favorite. I absolutely loved it. It was so expressive. Um, we did do a VeggieTales song uh, <laughs> for one of our lyrical performances. It's that one from, I, I want to say it's like a Christmas VeggieTales one where it's like that one that's like, the story that started on Christmas and the baby was born in the night. That's kind of all I remember. But the teacher made me the teacher in the story. And I felt really honored because I got to sit on this chair and like pretend, like mime that I was teaching all of these classmates who were like sitting at my feet all around me. <laughs> I was like, yes, children, gather around me. I shall tell you the story of Jesus because I'm the teacher. But <laughs> it was a cool dance, to be fair, at least in comparison to the rest of the dances. Um, because our outfits were pretty cool, at least they felt pretty cool at the time. The pants were stretchy, and we did have like a tunic thing that went down to here, you know, so it covered the butts. So you couldn't actually see how stretchy they were in the butt area, but I knew. It made me feel really cool, um, doing my dance to Veggie Tales. <laughs> And yeah, like that teacher was actually really good, I think. She had some really good moves that she taught us. Um, and it was cool because that class was like a big range of ages and like levels. And so I was sort of, me and a couple of my other friends from Awana were like on the lower end of the skill level, but we had some people in our class who were like really good. So it was cool to like kind of mix in with them and like learn from them and stuff. So we would do our end of the year performance, but that was not really the point of the worship dance class. All the other classes, you know, ballet, um, tap, jazz, lyrical, um, that like one hip hop class that was a total embarrassment to the art form of hip hop. Those all, you know, it was just like the weekly classes and then they had the end of the year performance. But with worship dance, the whole point of it was to go and spread the gospel and like share the joy and the light of the Lord by traveling around, not traveling super far, but like going out of our way to perform. Um, and it was often at churches and it was often at retirement homes we would do some, a lot of like processions down the aisle at churches or like at retirement homes, you know, they would set up the chairs for the residents and then we would like do processions down the middle of the chairs. And that always felt cool and interesting. Another important thing to mention about this, um, this Christian dance studio is that they were very, very aware of the controversy around dancing in the fundamentalist evangelical Christian world, right? So my particular like homeschool world of fundies was very like pro dance, but in a God honoring way. So the like verse of the Christian dance studio, the like theme verse was like, we will praise the Lord with dancing or something like that. And there was like a whole list of verses that all the Christians in my world would point to, to say like, you know, they praise the Lord with dancing, like David danced before the Lord, like dance this, dance that. And so, yeah, they were really big on dancing, but it was very much like we dance for the glory of God. We dance to like bring the body of Christ together, to share the joy of the Lord. Every time I say share the joy of the Lord, I do this. Which really fits into the way that we would like put words to dancing. It was very like, <laughs> very literal, you know? My worship dance class, we led the whole audience 
of the um, end of the year performance. And let me say, this was a big event in the homeschool world, okay? Like, a lot of homeschoolers from Awana, from the Christian Sports League, from the debate club, from like all the different like threads, all the different networks of homeschooling, they all came to this performance. It was like one of the big, you know, events of the year. So it was like a huge auditorium. We led them in this song that was like easy enough for pretty much anyone to follow along. And if I remember correctly, it was that How Great Is Our God song. And it was like, how great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. And what was the next part? All will say how. Okay, that's where it breaks down. I can't remember. It was maybe like, all will say how great. How great is our, okay. Yeah, I can't remember, but I do remember this move. For some reason, like at the time I really liked it. I was like, sing with me. Yes, sing with me. It just like really felt like sing with me, you know? <laughs> when I think back, I'm really glad that I was part of the fundies that were pro dance because it was a really great outlet, you know? Even though like we were, doing dances to worship songs, veggie tales. <laughs> it was still dance and it was, you know, moving, moving your emotions through your body, even if you didn't realize that's what you were doing. And so I'm grateful for that. That was a positive thing. Um, you know, it had like some negative parts of it, but overall, I, I am really grateful not to be like the Duggars, for example, who were not allowed to dance at all. You know, um, there's plenty of fundies that are like very anti-dance. And I guess we were the rare kind of fundies that were pro-dance. Um, again, a lot of like, a lot of stipulations, a lot of like rules around it and modesty. It's definitely a place where that's one of the negative parts of it. Like modesty was like a really big focus because it was like, okay, if we're going to dance, especially on a stage, like we need to make sure that we are super, super modest in our, in what we're wearing. Um, so that was a rough part of it, but I am grateful that we got to move, you know? Um, and yeah, that's something, a love of dance is something that I carry with me into the present. Um, I actually just had a TikTok that went viral. I went viral on TikTok for the first time and it was pretty fun. And I was doing it to uh, that song, Throw Your Ass in a Circle, but I was giving five different shapes that are easier than a circle because I have a tough time throwing my ass in a circle. Yeah, so you know, I've gone from worship dance to um, throwing my ass in different shapes. And apparently it resonated with a lot of people because it has over 200,000 views and you know, I've got like 200 followers on TikTok. So that was a big deal for me and it was pretty fun. Um, I basically went to bed after posting that and I woke up and I had like 800 notifications on TikTok and I was like, oh damn, I wish I had washed my hair. <laughs> I did not know that that video was going to get that much attention and my hair looks pretty flat because I needed to wash it. If anyone's wondering what this hair is inspired by, my daughter made this hairstyle for me tonight. So I decided to leave it and wear it proudly. Um, thank you for watching. This was a fun little video to do. I've been wanting to talk about worship dance for a while. Um, I do post more on my new personal channel than I do on this channel. So if you want to, feel free to follow me over there. It's just my name, Ellie Trevison. Um, I'll put a link down below, but you can also search it up. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Cut.